Hi everybody, Noah from Hacking Hollywood. Today we're gonna to be looking at the ATIM Mini. Now, the A10 Mini is one of the products that has the most bang for its buck. It can do a lot of really, really powerful things at a very affordable price point. I remember one of the first switchers I had was over $30,000, and the A10 Mini is only $300, and it outperforms that old switcher in many, many ways. I did an unboxing. Uh, I went through and, and showed the process of unboxing, and I forgot to turn on the microphone, so I'm gonna add this audio over that video and talk a little bit about the unboxing process, but also talk about the features of the ATEM Mini and why it's important and what's incredible about this device, what features it has and what it doesn't have, okay? So we'll notice right, right away in the top left corner, there is a Mac microphone input button. So make sure you press on for your microphone there and then you have eighth inch inputs there for microphones that you can step down from an XLR, a typical microphone connection down to this eighth inch. This board does accept mic and line level. So depending on which one you have, you'll have to set that in the settings. You do have an up and down volume buttons there too. So that will increase by three decibels the level that's coming in. Just below that, you have uh, audio that follows video, so A, F, V. And so you can reset that, you can turn that on and off. When it turns red, it's on. Honestly, most of the time, you will not worry about this center section just above the, the punches at the bottom. Those are gonna be the most important things, the one, two, three, and four, right? So that's how you would cut between the different sources. So when this A10 Mini shipped to me, it was originally in A, B switching mode or bus mode. And so essentially, as you pressed one, it would take camera one, press two, take camera two. So if you're familiar with live switchers or you've been working with these products in the past, you'll want a more traditional setup. And that's kind of what I have set up now where I would preview the camera before I take it. And then I can dissolve or cut to that camera by using the cut and dissolve button. So that's pretty straightforward, pretty simple there. Those buttons, the cut and auto buttons are gonna be on the far right side of the switcher. Whereas your one, two, three, and four, your input buttons are gonna be set there. And if you look at the back of the unit, you'll see uh, the HDMI's one, two, three, and four correspond with the one, and two, three, four that come into the switcher. You also have the ability to go black. On some of the advanced switchers, you can hold down a shift button and that will allow you to do other features like color bars or a specific color if you wanna output that just to check what that looks like. On these switchers, I don't see a hardware button for that, even though I'm pretty sure it does come in the software. I will mention there are two microphone inputs here. So two eighth inch that come on the back of that. So you'll see that there. The thing that's really awesome is this picture in picture mode. And so what that will allow us to do is do a mini me. So we have our overhead shot like this and we can do a little side shot like this. So you can see a picture within a picture, right? So I'm stealing the video from my camera one or this close up shot of my face. I'm superimposing that over this overhead shot that you see right here. Um, and that is the picture in picture settings. So to be honest with you, the, the, the default quadrant that that's there that's listed here is not the most ideal. If you press on that button, uh, and if I did that now, it would kind of skew my setup. It'll it'll be the full video window widescreen. So what I did is I went in and I adjusted the settings and cropped in so that you could see me and just me. And so I'm not gonna get into that fully in this uh, video here because that would be a little bit too much. But just so you know, that's what this little section's for in the top center, okay? So we do have cut and auto. So the auto button, you can change the duration. So by default, it's at a one second fade between the two shots, right? So if I wanted to, I could switch that to two seconds and that would be a much slower dissolve between the two shots. And then I could also switch to a half second dissolve and that's gonna be a much quicker transition between the two. You also have mix effects, so you can go ahead and play with those as well and get different transitions. So it's not your typical transition, it will be some sort of movement and something more interesting. The traditional video guy in me says that those transitions should be used as a minimum, but you'll see today that that is being used more and more. Now this thing also has a built-in keyer, which is pretty incredible. So you can key out green screen behind you in real time. I honestly have stayed away from a lot of the green screen stuff because it's not very good. Uh, so to be honest with you, I haven't used that key feature. And if you could do a natural background or a real background behind you, that is always preferred. Finally, we have our fade to black button, which is labeled as F. TB, and what that does is go dark on the screen. It'll push everything out to black, uh, and that's really nice if you're trying to end a program or if you have something uh, happen on air that you don't want to be shown to your audience, you can quickly hit the fade to black button. That's kind of a more traditional button, and um, mostly in my streams, I would end it bef without even pressing fade to black. I would do it somewhere else in the stream, in the line of different things, the workflow. So. 
Anyways, that is what the ATM Mini does. Uh, we also talked about in the other video, there there is some airport, so let me go ahead and disconnect the power here that twists in here, because this is going crazy for me. But you'll see the, the, the airflow happens where one of the sides here is the in, and the other side is the out, so air passes through to cool off the components within the system here. And you can also access this via ethernet. So both your computer and this device get an IP and they can talk to each other on the network. Um, and that's one way of communicating. You can also do a USB from here to the computer. And that's another way that the two devices can communicate. So I will note something I didn't quite grasp the understanding of when I first got uh, devices like this is Blackmagic has two pieces of software for you to use. So there is the ATEM control software, which will control the device. But before you even get there, there's an ATEM mini setup or ATEM setup software, I should say. And that ATEM software is what allows you to change the settings and kind of program this device to talk to the control software. So it's a little weird that there are two pieces of software that you need, but that's something that hasn't been mentioned a lot. Uh, that was kind of confusing to me. It might be confusing to you. And so that's that's pretty similar to a lot of the Blackmagic products. They have two things happening uh, in their control software. So they've set, set up two different systems so that you can set settings and set IP settings and that kind of thing. But most of the time you'll be using the ATEM control software to control this device. So a lot of the functions that you can do in the software, you can do on the hardware, but there's actually more features in the software than in the hardware. I am kind of old school. I've been doing this for like 15 years or so. So to me, having the hard inputs, the buttons is a big deal to me rather than just trying to do it all software. Um, so having an ATEM Mini like this to me is a little bit better than the rack mounted units where you don't have that hardware control. Now there are devices and other things that you can add to this to allow you to do punches and, and uh, hard button presses like a keyboard or even a dedicated pad. There's also stream decks, which are really, really helpful, but I found the A10 Mini does just fine and I, I really enjoyed this product as well. So, all right, if there's any questions, feel free to hit me up in the comments and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.